Happy New Year! Hi! Talk Robin here. Welcome to your weekly energy update. I used to call these things the weather report. Stay tuned. We're changing the name of this. But basically what we do every week is I come in here and I give you updates on the energy influences, the non-physical that can be impacting the decisions that we make, how we live our lives, and really actually even helping us set the tone for what we're wanting to do to, to be and to have this year. And it is a new year. Yesterday was my birthday, so I took the day off largely as much as I could. And I went to the gym and I worked out. I do personal training three days a week. I did a planning session for my business with one of my mentors. And then I did a private coaching session with my own beloved mentor as well. And then I went out to dinner with my husband and my stepdaughter and my dad and stepmom came over as well. So it was really just a beautiful day. Just kind of, I love my birthday and I love celebrating my life and I love sharing that celebration with others as well. And if you wished me happy birthday in the actualization zone here on Facebook yesterday, thank you. Thank you for being part of this community. It's always a gift to be able to connect with you and to be able to be of high service to you and your evolution. So you've heard me saying for a while now that 2023 is beginning the era of spiritual mastery. And you've probably also heard me say that when I think about spiritual mastery in this world that we're living in, I'm not talking about trudging up a mountain path to the top of a mountain and sitting in meditation for so long that shells grow on your head like Buddha. And neither am I talking about having to sacrifice yourself or anything like that. But what I am talking about is deepening into, deepening into your own unique gifts, talents, and abilities, especially in the spiritual and intuitive realm, and applying those abilities to your everyday life. That's what we're talking about here. So as we're embarking on this new era of spiritual mastery, what the, the guides were saying a couple things this morning as I, as I tuned in. One, they said, remember that spiritual mastery is akin to being, to owning a vineyard and nurturing the vines and watching the soil and watching the weather. And there are a lot of conditions involved in the actual making of a very fine wine. And wine can go bad and things can go sideways every step of the process. And so too is the case with the journey of spiritual mastery. So if we can think of ourselves as vine growers, as vintners maybe, about how we're, how we're cultivating our own spiritual mastery, I think that that's a really good place to start on this journey. Growing vines, Harvesting grapes, creating wine takes patience, and there's an art and a science to it. And so too is the case with spiritual mastery. Now, when I say spiritual mastery, that can feel like a really arduous task. How do you even know when you've achieved spiritual mastery? Well, I can tell you this, that most people on this planet, myself included, are not spiritual masters. The vast majority of us are on the spiritual journey and we continue to do our work day in and day out, our inner work and our outer work in order to continue the evolution process, in order to, I don't wanna say it, I'm going to say this, but this isn't exactly what I mean. We often think about it as attaining enlightenment, which is a very Buddhist or existential concept. But I really think that it just really is about honing your gifts, refining your gifts and sharing your gifts with with your life and with the people around you as well. I think that's a good place to start. Now, the other thing the guides wanted me to talk with you about today is you may have seen it already, but I'm starting to work one-on-one -on -one and in small groups with people who are really wanting to refine their spiritual gifts, talents, and abilities to deepen their understanding of their innate abilities. And I'm doing that through that beautiful program called Becoming the Channel. And along with that, there's channel school, of course. How could we not have channel school? I'm so excited about it. 
But channel school is really my contribution to deepening our understanding of our spiritual gifts and really preparing you as a spiritually intelligent person to be able to channel the energies that you most desire to channel, to use your spiritual gifts in a way that's a contribution to yourself and to the people in your world, and to essentially bring heaven to earth. That's like the, the big picture goal of, of channel school. So I, I share this with you for a couple of reasons. One is that we have to understand where you are on the spiritual path in order to understand the work that you still needs to be done. So a while ago, I created a quiz called, it's all about spiritual intelligence. I don't actually remember what the name of the quiz is. I don't think that there is a name for it other than it's called a spiritually intelligent leadership quiz. And what I've come to realize in all of the work that I've done over the past 23 years at this point around my own spiritual intelligence at the intersection of psychology and spirituality is that there are four big milestones that we're looking at when we're looking at spiritual mastery. The first milestone is just an awakening. Am I awake? Am I awake? Am I awake to my gifts? Do I understand that I'm more than just skin and bones and, and muscle? and fibers? Do I understand that I'm a spiritual being living a human experience? That's level one. That's like the first, that's the first stage of spiritual intelligence is just, am I awake? And once you wake up, there's a definitely an awakening process and more people are waking up every single day. Every single day, more people are waking up to their abilities. They're, they're coming out of existential crisis. They're coming out of a realization that there has to be more to life than meets the eye. So that awakening process takes a while, but that's really the first milestone around spiritual mastery. And the second stage is arise. So first you wake up and then you rise. You arise to your gifts. You start to understand your gifts. You start to deepen your usage of the gifts so that they're not just a parlor trick or something that you do for fun on the side, but they become, your, your intuitive and spiritual gifts become an integral part of how you do life. They're the first thing that you go to rather than the last thing you refer to when you're trying to solve a problem or manifest something that your heart desires. So developing the spiritual gifts, and I find that a lot of people in my community are somewhere between the awakening stage and the arising stage. A lot of times you're in the arising stage because you did the Neo personality assessment with me and you realized, oh, I am one of the most open, I have one of the most open personalities on the planet. No wonder I'm so highly imaginative. No wonder I'm so intuitive. No wonder. What does that mean for me? Well, it means that you have some spiritual gifts that need to be not just awakened, but activated, and you need to practice them as well. So that's the second level. The third level is to apply, to apply your spiritual gifts, not just to your life, but to the lives of other people. So you might find yourself applying your spiritual gifts if you're a physician or if you're an engineer. I know that sounds crazy, but there are lots of spiritually intelligent engineers and physicians in my world. And when you start to apply these gifts to other people's lives, to creating things in your work, creating miracles in your patients, that's the application stage. That, that's really an integration of the work that you do with the gifts that you have. And then the final milestone in my mind at this point around spiritual mastery is around the amplification of the gifts. So that's really where you step into spiritual leadership and, and deciding to host things perhaps or deciding to write books or make contributions in the spiritual community and help other people who are at earlier stages of development in their spiritual gifts. Now I share this with you. I know this is an energy report, but it really is a tone setter for what we're doing going forward. What we're doing going forward is we are embarking on this journey towards spiritual mastery. And as I said, you have to understand where you are in the process of it in order to really identify what the next step is. So I'm going to post the link to the spiritual intelligence quiz in the comments so you can take that and find out for yourself. So that's number one. And when you get your results, please repost them in our group or post them in the comments so that I can respond to you and, and tell you what your next step is or tune in and tell you what your next step is. 
So that's first thing. Second thing is we're going to do some cards today to anchor in the energies this month. So the major energy this month is around watering your garden. This is around nourishment, body care, being tender with yourself, being quiet and resting. And let's see, what do we want to say about that? So often, I think when the, the first of the year starts, what ends up happening is that we spend a whole lot of time pushing into what's next. There's a bunch of pressure to pick your word for the year and to get after it at the gym and all of those things. But really what we're being invited to this month is really profound levels of self-care. Put lotion on your legs, for example. If you go to the gym, and I advocate going to the gym, I advocate exercise and strength training, and I'll tell you why in a minute. But if you go to the gym, do so in a way that is honoring of your body. You're not at the gym to beat your body up. You're, you're at the gym you're at the gym to honor yourself and to create a vessel, to create a channel, some place where energy can channel to fortify who you are so that you can channel higher frequencies of energy. You know, I used to go to the gym out of vanity, I would say. I liked my, I was a college athlete and I liked my athlete's body. And then I went to grad school and completely lost my athlete's body. But in the last 10 years, working out, being at the gym, being physically active has been an integral part of my life. And I used to think it was because I just wanted to look good. Well, in the last three years, what I've come to realize is that this has really been training for this time in the world, which is all around, again, spiritual mastery. So my body has to be strong enough and fortified enough to channel these high frequencies, to be able to tune into my guides, to be able to share this information with you and to be able to hold space for the people who come to me who are ready to deepen their relationship with their spiritual gifts, to understand who they actually are rather than who the world has told them to be. So that's my responsibility as a, a spiritually intelligent leader is to have a refined and strong body, a body of a spiritual warrior really, um, in order to hold this space, to hold the frequency for people like you who are ready to step into it. And that can be the case for you as well. So we wanna step out of this whole kind of vanity around working out, around the clothes that we wear, around the foods that we eat, and really step into how can I fortify my body? How can I make my body as strong and supple and high frequency as possible in order for me to be able to continue my evolution? So that is what this month primarily is about, is rest, recovery, being gentle and nourishing. Water your garden this month. How can you water your garden? The second card that comes forward is a labyrinth card. You know how much I love the labyrinth. But this is the labyrinth. The message here is all paths lead, lead to home. Remember, the labyrinth is not a maze. When you're in a maze, there are dead ends. A labyrinth, there's only one way in and one way out. But all paths lead to home. So this is an opportunity this month to really tune into your inner authority, even if other people are having different experiences from you, really being able to tune into what is right and best for me and honoring that. That's going to point you toward home and that's going to get you home much more quickly than paying attention to what anybody else is saying, including me. I always say, take what serves and leave the rest. If there's something in here that resonates with you, take it and run with it. That's something that your soul needed or wanted to hear today. And if some things don't vibe with you, that's cool. Leave them. Don't take them just because I said so. So this is about tapping into your inner authority, tapping into your intuition, and turning your gaze inside. This part of, of spiritual mastery is doing the inner work. Your inner work is going to show up in your outer world. So no longer, I believe, are we meant to be focusing on just the external kind of superficial vanity of being in the world. But instead, when we go in, when we dive deep, when we go in to do our inner work, and we go through the cobwebs, and we go through the dark spots, and we go through the traumas, on the other side of that, is the highest and most evolved version of ourselves. 
We have to do the inner work. And by the way, you're not meant to do the inner work by yourself. Don't buy into that illusion that you have to do everything by yourself. Right now, the other card that comes forward, I want to find this here because it stood out for me, is around creative accountability. Creative accountability, manifestation, art. But the creative accountability to me, I, have, I haven't been without a coach for, I don't know, I'm gonna say five years, probably longer than that actually. I always work with a high level coach who's much further ahead on the path than I am. I don't do this work by myself. Oh my God, forget it. Um, that doesn't make me less than, it certainly doesn't take away my inner authority, but it actually sanctifies the process that I go through. Somebody's witnessing my process and that is one of the most powerful things I believe right now that we can do for each other is to witness each other's growth and evolution. And so you are not meant to do this journey alone. You're not meant to do self-care by yourself. You're not meant to follow your intuition by yourself. What, what good in that would that be? But to be a contribution and to be in the flow of sacred reciprocity invites you into these higher level relationships with people who have walked the path that you're on who have a deeper understanding than you do at this time around what's possible, who actually have access to the infinite field of possibilities, who have freed themselves from so many of the, the traps and the constraints of what it means to be human. And now is your time to do the same. And that is one of the reasons, one of the many reasons that I'm working in this space around becoming the channel, becoming the channel in your own life. Even if you never choose to do something like I am doing with it, you're channeling something. So you may as well be channeling the highest frequency emotions, the high, highest frequency experiences that you possibly can. So creative accountability. And then the last one for today is January. Look at that, it's a portal. It's an opening, it's an opportunity, an invitation to do things differently in your world, to find a different way. Your soul is calling you to that. There are many people in my community who have a dual mission right now. One is to be a channel, and the other is to assist with the ascension or the uplifting of humanity. Maybe that's you. Maybe that's you. First thing we need to know, though, is what level of spiritual intelligence are you at right now? Are you just beginning your, your, mass, your journey towards mastery of spiritual intelligence? Are you somewhere in the middle? Or are you more like me? Are you ready to amplify? Or are you already amplifying your gifts into the broader community? It's time to link arms and it's time to come together in this space. for the good of your soul and the good of all of the people who you're meant to be contributing to and being of high service to. All right, there's your energy report for today. That was a doozy, that was a doozy. If you want more information on Channel School or if you want to have a conversation with me about working together privately, I still have a couple of spots, private spots open for high level leaders who are really ready to master their spiritual gifts and to become the channel, then you private message me and let me know that you're interested in having that conversation and we'll get you rolling on that, that piece of the puzzle. And everybody, I want everybody to go and take the quiz, the spiritual intelligence quiz, so we can find out exactly where you are in your own spiritual mastery process. Until next week, or until the next video, I will see you later.